And it's the longest running in the state or in the? Welcome to Community Watch, and today we will be talking about one of the longest health programs in the state of Georgia. Stay tuned, we'll be right back right after this. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit boostup.org and take the first step. Welcome to Community Watch. Greg. Doc. Uh, how are you? Good, bro. How you been? But how, how are you really? Well, I guess I need some screeners. I guess you I do. <laughs> you do. I went to my doctor recently. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing I could be doing better. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about the health initiative for what used to be men. Yeah. Him. Mm -hmm. um, it's expanded. Mm-hmm. And women. Now it's called the Health Initiative for Men and Women. I pre I predict in several years to be the health the health the health initiative for families because men, women, and children. Because as we talk about health, we got to find we got we have to start younger. Mm -hmm. We have to. And uh, this is a pretty old initiative. It is. You know, I've heard it said several times in some of our meeting, 100 meetings, it's the longest running program. I'm like, are we sure about that? Because you just don't think about 18 years, which would be, this is the 18th year of the Health Initiative for Men and Women. And I was just thinking, you know, 18 years is not a long time when you start talking about it across the state. But that's, um, I mean, that's great that for 18 years, the 100 with its supporters and its sponsors and partners have been able to have this initiative. So we're going to talk more about that today. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we will be talking about the Health Initiative for Men and Women today. Uh, if you don't know about this initiative, you need to, and it's coming up pretty soon, so you need to make plans to be there, and we'll be joined by our guests right after this to give us the details. Don't go away. Your life is filled with opportunities to show the world you can take charge. It's waking up each day with a mission. It's working each day toward a goal. It's choosing to rise. It's charging forward with a purpose. It's changing the course of your life and taking charge of your future. If you're ready to be a take charger, enroll at Georgia Highlands College today. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're very happy to have with us today Curtis Adams and Bernice Silva. Welcome. Thank Welcome you. back, I should say. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the Health Initiative for Men is 18 years old. And women. And women. Men and women. Men and women. When, when did it make that, <laughs> when did that change? When did that well, change? About uh, four years ago, uh, one of our partners, the uh, Northwest Georgia Cancer Coalition came to our group and said, hey, we would like to do one of these events for women. And I think they had two years that they were able to do the event, but because the events are so closely aligned, we were duplicating a lot of the services and the resources required. So about three years ago, we actually combined it and made it the health initiative for men plus women. But if I, if I remember correctly, um, women have always been a crucial element in the health initiative for men, even when it was only right. the health, health initiative for men. Correct. 
One of the, um, when we first started this initiative, uh, it was primarily focused on making men more aware of being screened for prostate cancer. And so we knew that one of the key components was to make sure we attracted wives, sisters, caregivers to get men. Men don't like to go to the doctor. We just don't. Uh, I think sometimes we think we're superhuman and we just go on automatic. It's a waste of time to go to a doctor's office and sit there and we're impatient. So we had women involved to kind of calm us down and say there's nothing more important than getting checked at least once a year. Uh, well, I, I remember that being part of the, 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 the way you would motivate men to actually participate. But it, it seems to me that this has been a pretty successful initiative uh, with good attendance for a long time. Uh, is that, I mean, is that, that's my impression. That's correct, isn't it? Uh, it's correct. Um, we, we could not have facilitated this event without partners. And our attendance over the years, I mean, there will be a lot of events going on that day, but consistently we've had 200 to 400 people come through the health initiative for men yeah. and women. That's and, a lot. And to be honest, you know, we don't talk about this a lot, but I, you know, I, this one thing is I'm very big about because we don't tell our story a lot. We, this program saved lives. You know, we've had on average, I think about two people that have to go back for follow up, no more than two, but about two have been diagnosed with prostate cancer over the years on average every year. And we've had people that have literally went on to have different, op different options available to them. But we're talking about a program that literally saved lives and affects families and it's free. And so it's one of those situations where, you know, we are happy that we're able to do it, but we could be doing more because more people should be getting screened for a lot of things that they're not, that they're not even aware of that they may could be living with. So, Ms. Silva, how, how did you get trapped into this, uh, <laughs> into this uh, organization uh, initiative? Well, um, like Curtis said, um, the Northwest Georgia Regional Cancer Coalition um, had their own health fair, and I used to um, be part of that team. Um, so we've always kind of worked together um, coordinating these events. Um, so now that uh, we have one event, I um, am the contact person for um, this, this year's health initiative for men and women. Well, I mean, she's been modest. Curtis wrangled her in. You know, we, <laughs> we, we realized that as men, sometimes we are not good at the, the dots and T's within the 100. Some men are great at that. You are great at that. But we are not as great sometimes. So I, we had meetings and Curtis said, look, we have to get her because we need someone to head this up to make sure we got everything T's crossed and I's dot. And that's, and that's how it wasn't just like she, he, he put the strong arm on her. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm curious. And this, you know, this can be a question for all of y'all. Um, are men getting any better about wanting to go to the doctor or, or, or uh, having screenings or checking on their, their health? Is that changing at all from what y'all are seeing? Well, uh, Bernice is the expert, but I'll just tell you my perspective. Um, since I've been involved in this event, um, it's beautiful to see when I arrive normally at 6, 6.30 in the morning before the event, we already have men that's there. And so, several of them pride themselves on being the first people there, and they've been there every year, and we'll see them out in the community, and they say, you guys still having your health fair? So I would say the general consensus is, yes, they're better, but we still need more men getting screened because Greg is certainly right in the fact that there's no doubt that this one program, a signature program of the 100 Black Men in Rome, Northwest Georgia, has saved lives. We've had members in our organization who were diagnosed with prostate cancer at this event, so it definitely saves lives. So. Ms. Silva, do you think men are getting better? I do think so. Um, I mean, this event has been going on for so long, and um, 
I know that a lot of men look forward to this event. Um, every year we get calls um, and we have people that have been coming, you know, consistently. Um, and they invite their, their, um, their um, you know, male partners, uh, co-workers, everything like that. So I do think that um, men are getting better, but of course we could do a lot better. And I think combining the event even helps a lot more with that. You know, one thing I'm, I'm looking forward to, because you know, mentoring is my thing. We're at an age now, 18 years in, where I look forward to now where men are bringing, are coming with their sons. Because we have men that, you know, that have fathers and have sons and grandsons. I'm really looking to, we in that age range now, what we literally can start seeing three generations. Because I think as men, older men are coming, they bring in a, their sons that's in their 30s and 40s, and they're bringing their young children that this will be an event eventually where you know we see three generations participating. The young kids may not be able to get no, may not be able to have any screenings, but just making them aware of the importance of screenings, I think is key for us. And I'm, and we're at that point now, you know, where we, we should start seeing that. Uh, when, when is the event now? It's August the 17th. August 17th, which is a Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. August 17th at the Floyd County Health Department. It's from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. 8 to 12, yes. so, um, and it has, I think, uh, like uh, you have both alluded to, it has kind of a social atmosphere to it. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's taken a lot of the fear that men build up in their mind from go visiting the doctor. So I think the camaraderie of having men there and you know, people getting checked, I mean, and, you know, reminding each other that we have to get checked and take care of each other. Um, I know that there are quite a few screenings that take place. Uh, I don't know if you can even name them all, but um, you've mentioned, of course, that the impetus of getting it started was prostate screening. Correct. Right. But it really has grown far beyond that, yeah. and it includes that. But it, it it goes far beyond that. So so what all is involved, or what can you have done, yeah. or so check? Mm -hmm. So some of the screenings that will be provided that day are, um, you know, the prostate exams, uh, glucose, cholesterol, blood pressures. Um, we'll also have vision screenings, dental. Um, what else? Mammograms. We will be having mammograms and Pap smears. Uh, for pap smears, there is no appointment needed, um, so women, please come out and get screened. Uh, we will also have um, the mammograms, um, and that one does require appointments. So for that, um, women can call at 706-509-6840, option one. Now, is that new, the pap smear part? No, so this this is also part of uh, combining the events, but we've, we, you know, when we had the Women's um, Health Initiative, uh, we did provide uh, pap smears and mammograms. Yep. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you know, it's, it's focused on cancer, but over the years we've grown into diabetes uh, awareness, so Floyd and Redmond, some of our partners, they've kind of, helped us build those screenings into it. We have um, a Northwest Georgia Dermatology Group that will be evaluating for skin cancer, but also any other skin condition. They've been one of our primary partners over the years. So it's, you know, we tried to go through one day and list all the potential screenings a person could have and the cost associated to that, but, uh, you know, with not everyone having insurance, probably they'll receive up to eight hundred to a thousand dollars worth of screenings on that Saturday. And there will also be plenty of resources, um, community resources there. There will be plenty of vendors, um, so you know that's also something that people can look forward to, not just for themselves but for their families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you you kind of went over this quickly, but eight. How much money are people saving? Yeah. Uh, 800 to 1,000, 1,200, $1, yeah. Yeah, and test is totally free to all the participants. All you have to do is come and register for the event, and if you participate in all the screenings available, 
this, depending on your gender, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So you, you save about a grand. Correct. Oh, I, 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 I think it's more than that because right. I seen my doctor bill lately. <laughs> <laughs> and what it costs just to go into the to the office, uh -huh. <laughs> right. but you it's it's clearly a, a wonderful event that is free to the public, um, and that's the thing you know it's free, and in today's society, you know what healthcare costs. Even if you have insurance, it still makes sense to come take advantage of some of these screenings, even if you have insurance, because you can take those results to your doctor next time you go. So it doesn't really make sense to go pay for a service that can be you can receive free here. Well, um, I know we're coming up on a break in a, in a few seconds. So when we come back, we'll talk more about this event and give you the details that you need to plan for it. Uh, $1,000. You can do some things with $1,000. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The color in my garden keeps the pink of my cheeks. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have meals on wheels. They're my savior. My name is Lola Silvestri. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're talking with Curtis Adams and Bernice Silva about the Health Initiative for Men and Women uh, being presented by the 100 Black Men of Rome and Northwest Georgia on August 17th, uh, Saturday, from 8 to 12 at the Health Department, which is on East 12th. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, free, totally free health screenings, um, and it's the 18th annual event. Yes, it is. Um, from the research that we've been able to do, uh, I think Greg mentioned it in the, in the opening, uh, this is the longest running community-based health initiative in the state of Georgia. Uh, the only one that I could find close, uh, Congressman David Scott does one for the Atlanta area, and they're in their 15th year, so we even have that one by three years, but we could not have it's done not it. not even close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's the, that's the key. Uh, there are probably some health initiatives in this community. Uh, Floyd used to have one, Redmond used to have one, Harbin used to have one, but we've been effective in establishing those partnerships and it just makes sense that you know we combine those resources and people come out and we're getting the numbers as far as client serve that supports continuing the effort and it's free and it is free um now now greg has pointed out that he is way too young to remember but um do we, I mean, was this an initiative that was started because of a recognized need or uh, I, know th I know that the, the national organization has certain uh, guidelines and initiatives yeah. that, that are, are uh, national. Yeah. Um, Just, um, we could not have initiated this event without the support of Dr. James Crane. He moved to this community. He was a long time urologist with um, Harbin Clinic, and but he's a doctor from the military. And based on the research and data that he had been doing, he noticed that African-American men was more likely not only to have prostate cancer, but also die from it. So he's always been passionate about making sure that um, sometimes the underserved communities have the information to take care of themselves. So that's kind of what initiated, initiated one of our founding members, uh, Mr. J.L. Vaughn. He was a patient of Dr. Crane, and it just started over a cup of coffee, really. 
And then we got guidelines or directives from the national office. Uh, I remember myself and Larry Morrow going to a conference in Miami. And on the way back, Larry said, hey, I think Mr. Vaughn has talked to Dr. Crane because they tried to do it. And Dr. Crane tell us he tried for several years to do it independently, mm -hmm. and he could never get more than a handful of men. And so I think it was just a combining of ideas. Well, um, obviously it was an initiative that the community embraced um, because it's been going strong for so, for so long now. Um, but not only, and I just want to in, in, interrupt for a minute, Doc, that yeah. what I love about this screening, you know, we really want men to come out and be screened for prostate cancer. But there are so many other diseases that it's the African American community that we die from. Diabetes, well a lot of Americans are dying now from diabetes complications, hypertension, those things. So not only prostate cancer screenings are available, but some of these other, and just about all of these things are treatable. So we are dying at record numbers from treatable diseases. And that's the part that's nerve wracking, because we shouldn't be dying in 2019 from treatable diseases. So that's why it's so important for people to come out to be tested because you really need to know your numbers. And if you know your numbers, then you can at least, you, have a, you can make a decision whether or not to act upon it. But it's so much more than just prostate screening. I know a lot of men may not wanna do that, but me personally, my, I have a, a uncle who recently, who passed several years ago who, was a, who had prostate uh, cancer. So having it directly immediate in my family like that, you know, I needed to start my screening before 40. And so I just, it's just one of those things that if you know your numbers, then you can be proactive in, in doing something about it. And there's so many screenings there. And it's not a hospital environment. It really is a social environment where while you're waiting to get that DRE, you're having coffee or whatever, and you're joking with guys. And so it's just a great event that, you know, I look forward to it every year because it's just, you know we are making a difference in the lives of so many people with this event. And now with women even becoming more a part of it, I, I just see this growing even beyond my expectations. You know, uh, it seems to me, and I don't know if this initiative, maybe it's related, I don't know, but uh, when I first met you, Health was not a big concern for it you. It wasn't. I, I you I must mean, go there. Huh? I witnessed. <laughs> I witnessed some behavior on your part that uh, I know used to scare you, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but now um, you aggravate me about, about eating health habits things. and yes. things of that nature. Yes, I do. I do, and I have to be honest. Uh, I am so grateful for the one hundred because in growing up with the organization, I have really learned so much. Uh, that impacts me. You know, even though we're helping other people, it, it impacts us too in our families. And so health is more, I'm more conscious of my decisions as it, and as it relates to my health. Very conscious about that. And as I get older, it becomes even more important. And so you are correct. And I think <laughs> the way that it's impacted you, it also has impacted a lot of other men um, and has made them more aware of their, their health. So this mm -hmm. event really, I think, has done that, not only for you, but for yeah. a lot of other men. And I, I just, I wanted to add, I, I think that one of our goals have always been to reach out to particularly uh, the community of color. And what we've seen, and over the years, we're having more and more Hispanic families join the event. And uh, Bernice has worked real hard to make, you know, to remove all the barriers. We have translators there, um, and she probably can speak more to that, but we, we try to remove the barriers so men will not have an excuse. If they show up, mm -hmm. that's the step they have to make. We'll make sure that they're taken care of. But, you know, um, it seems to me that in addition to, and you've mentioned that every year there are at least a couple of men who uh, find out they have a, an issue, a serious issue that needs to be taken care of that they might not have found out about Correct. if it had not been for, for the event. But I wonder how many lives you have impacted or even saved from just teaching preventable behaviors. I mean, I, I mean, uh, good behaviors that prevent illness. 
because that's something that's hard to measure. But obviously it's happening. Yeah, it is. I, I don't know that we, Courage can speak more to this. I don't know if we, if we can measure that the impact, but we know. I mean, I know we know because I know in the 100, we take it seriously. And if, and if when we lose someone from this earth, you know, we, we discuss some of that stuff, especially if it's someone that dies from a treatable disease that we, that we know about. And so I do think we have changed the conversation in households as it relates, especially to black men in Rome about health. I do, I believe that with, with all, with, without any doubt that we have at least changed the conversation. Mm -hmm. And changing the conversation changes actions. I think another important fact that we, we need to bring, uh, information we need to provide, um, some of the testing requires that you fast. So if you're having blood sh uh, sugar and some of the other cholesterol tests, uh, we ask that you not have anything after midnight. Once you come to this event, one or the other payoff, we always provide uh, breakfast uh, at the event. We have door prizes. There's a lot of incentives that if you come out to this event, not only will you be taken care of, uh, there's some bonuses in you attending. Wait a minute right quick. It's right. funny you say that we have breakfast because we, when we first started, breakfast wasn't healthy. <laughs> it wasn't healthy breakfast. Yeah. It's over the years we've gotten better. So if you come out there, it will be something healthy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when the event uh, uh, is August 17th, the, um, the mammograms require appointments. Appointment. Yes, um, that is the only uh, uh, screening that will require appointment. Um, so again, the number is 706. Five zero nine six eight forty, option one. All right. So for women that want to have mammograms mm -hmm. that day, they need to, to call that number. And we'll give That's it one right. more time before before the end of the show. Everything else, you just walk in. But but you you recommend no breakfast, no eating after midnight, and I I guess uh, black coffee is okay. That's what my doctor tells me. I don't know. When I go, I, my doctor tells me nothing after midnight to right. eat or drink. Right. Yeah, so eat or drink. Eat or drink wow, after midnight. Crazy. Okay, but y'all refresh them as soon as they. That's get right. There. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. So uh, August seventeenth, um, a lot of different screenings, social uh, event, and also a big tradition for the community in eighteen years. Correct. Uh, this event is old enough to go to college now. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so in a few seconds, we're going to take another break. When we come back, uh, we will give you the essential information again, including the number you need to call women if you want a mammogram that day. So uh, get something to write with. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're talking with Curtis Adams and Bernice Silva about the Health Initiative for Men and Women, which is August 17th, uh, Saturday, at the Floyd County Health Department from 8 a.m. to noon. Screenings are free. Um, women, if you want a mammogram that day, you have to call in advance, but that's the only test you have to call in advance for and what is that number? Yes, yeah, so the number is 706-509-6840, um, option one. And um, is that, do we need a number for more information? So for more information, uh, yes, you, um, I can, I'm the contact person, so my number is 706-266-8330. All right, um, thank you for for the event, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week on Community Watch.